Hi, I am Rebecca Eve, and I have spent over 10 years on five different college or university campuses as a student research assistant or adjunct professor. And while there, I observed plenty of student and staff interactions. The most disturbing interactions I witnessed on a college campus were the proceedings in a Title IX kangaroo court. The level of biased and discriminatory behavior by college administrators who were supposed to be objective and supposed to determine the truth was absolutely alarming to me. And after a bit of research, I found many other campuses had the same problem. As a result, I was inspired to create this podcast to help students avoid a Title IX proceeding that usually strips individuals of many due process protections that are required by our Constitution and recognized in our courts. Now, I am not an attorney or a college administrator, and I am not giving legal or professional advice, but I am offering information based on my observations and research on Title IX proceedings on college campuses. And I am not the only one out there who is concerned about the lack of constitutional rights for college students. Over 700 lawsuits have been filed against schools for egregious Title IX proceedings resulting in hundreds of court decisions or pre-decision settlements in favor of students. There are also numerous organizations devoted completely or partially to this problem, such as FACE, Families Advocating for Campus Equality, Save Our Sons at HelpSaveOurSons.com, and FIRE, Foundation for Individual Rights in Education. Not to mention the numerous law firms that have cropped up across the country with departments devoted to helping clients with Title IX issues. If you get a chance, I do recommend you watch the Fox News report, The Truth About Sex and College. It aired about five years ago, but it will still give you an idea of what has been happening on many college campuses. The link to this video is pictured on your screen, but it and other references should be in the description box as well. In case you are unfamiliar with Title IX and kangaroo courts, I will give you a brief definition here because I want this podcast to be mainly about how to avoid them. So, Title IX is a federal law that prohibits discrimination on the basis of sex in any federally funded education program. An education program could be a college, university, or public school, and federal funding could be things such as student loans or Pell Grants. In 2011, this law was reinterpreted by the U.S. Department of Education to include sexual misconduct allegations. As a result, schools developed their own judgment system that consists of mock court proceedings conducted on a campus. These proceedings usually do not follow the rules that apply in a court of law. Instead, they follow rules college administrators make up for their individual school and are therefore referred to as kangaroo courts. These made-up rules often severely limit the rights of the accused individual and favor an outcome that secures federal funding over determining the truth. Okay, how to avoid all of this. I have identified seven steps that could help protect you. For simplicity, I may use the female pronoun when referring to an accuser and the male pronoun when referring to someone accused of misconduct. But anyone can be falsely accused or make false accusations. Step one, avoid or at least be very aware of certain colleges or specific states that have been identified as having policies, procedures, or laws that are extremely biased against individuals accused of misconduct, which I have listed here for you on the screen. In contrast, state institutions in Kentucky, Michigan, Ohio, and Tennessee are required to provide some basic due process rights for their students. Step 2. Check the Title IX policies or procedures of the colleges you are considering. Beware of schools that report the following. The use of trauma-informed or victim-centered methods to train employees or contractors. This training is not based on empirical evidence and starts with the biased assumption that the accused person is guilty. Then instead of objectively following all the evidence, only evidence that supports one narrative is collected while evidence that supports alternative narratives is rejected. Schools that use the preponderance of the evidence for standard of proof which means that the burden of proof is met when there is a 50.01% chance that the evidence is true, as opposed to using the clear and convincing standard of proof, which means that the burden of proof is met when there is about a 75% chance that the evidence is true. Using this lowest standard of proof, preponderance, makes it very easy for an administrator to tilt the evidence to support whichever side she wants. Schools having one person serve as the Title IX coordinator and investigator, adjudicator, or appeal officer. 
Giving too much control to one person can lead to many problems. One such problem is confirmation bias, which results when something like an intuition or scanty evidence causes that one person to predetermine the guilt of the accused, after which that person only collects evidence to support that predetermination and contradicting evidence is suppressed. Schools that require an affirmative consent standard to prove consent for any sexual activity. The definition for this varies from college to college. Sometimes it's called yes means yes. And generally, it requires participants to obtain objectively demonstrable consent at every stage of a sexual encounter, not just at the beginning. But what constitutes a stage and what constitutes consent usually remains ambiguous, so that it would probably be impossible without some kind of a recording for an accused student to prove they received consent from their partner during a sexual encounter. 3. Avoid potential accusers, probably the most important step. People have different personality traits and temperaments, and some may be more likely to falsely accuse another person of sexual misconduct than others. Try to avoid alone time, like in a dorm room, private room, or car, individuals that can be described as bossy or demanding, irritable, fussy, angry, or have a self-absorbed, entitled demeanor. Additionally, individuals that like to play the victim and gain sympathy from others by regularly complaining about rude or inconsiderate behavior towards them or complaining that some creepy person is pursuing them. A false accuser may have a person such as hysteronic, borderline, or narcissistic, and as a result they may display impulsive, provocative, or highly dramatic behavior with intense emotions that can change quickly. Lastly, avoid spending alone time with anyone who has become angry with you for any reason, such as a joke you retold, an opposing opinion, or ending of a relationship the two of you had. Some individuals may use the Title IX office to punish someone they are angry with by falsely accusing them of sexual misconduct. They may cite a previous consensual encounter or they may try to stage an encounter by getting the person they are angry with alone and afterwards file a report that they were just harassed or assaulted. From here, it could be the word of the accuser against the word of the accused, and the Title IX administrator could be trained to believe the accuser and not trained to pursue all evidence objectively. Number four, alcohol. Very simple. Avoid drinking alcohol until you are of legal age to do so and know how it will affect you. Alcohol can decrease inhibitions and impair judgments, rendering you vulnerable to mistakes that can impact the rest of your education, career, and life. Numerous college students have been falsely accused of sexual misconduct after a consensual sexual encounter where one or both of the participants were under the influence of alcohol. This appears to be a common theme in false Title IX accusations. For example, two students drink alcohol, engage in consensual sexual activity, then one of them regrets it the next day or next week or even next year and decides to report it as sexual assault or rape to a Title IX office. Often basing the accusation on being under the influence of alcohol and unable to give consent. The problem is exasperated by Title IX administrators who may not consider that both the accuser and the accused could be equally influenced by this alcohol. My last point with respect to alcohol is, if you encounter a drunk student, it would be in your best interest to resist the desire to personally help that student to their room. Instead, call campus security, or 911 if you happen to be off campus, to report drunk behavior, or call a cab, Uber, or their roommate to drive them back. By calling campus security or 911, you will be protecting them from immediate danger, helping them get the proper treatment they need, and protecting yourself from a potential false accusation. Often, Title IX cases are the word of the accuser versus the word of the accused. And as I stated in Step 1, the Title IX administrator may be trained to believe the accuser's narrative and not uphold the presumption of innocence. Number 5. Sex. I have to start with, follow the advice of your parents, guardian, clergy, or personal advisor or counselor if you have one. But just in case a relationship develops, it's a good idea to be prepared. So, check the college's student handbook for what they require to confirm consensual sex. Some schools use affirmative consent described in Step 1. Other schools may not have any specific outline for how to prove consent. And in that case, avoid engaging in any type of sexual contact unless you get your partner's written consent. 
As bizarre as this sounds, it may save your education and future. Keep in mind that even written consent may not be enough in some colleges and universities. So, in the absence of a smartphone application that allows partners to agree to have sex, make sure your partner sends you a text initiating the sexual encounter. You could ask her to add specifics such as what parts of her body she wants you to touch or ask her to describe what she likes or what she is into. Once your partner responds, save this text correspondence forever. A warning. Since 2011, the definition of sexual misconduct has been expanded way beyond rape, sexual assault, and severe persistent harassment. At some colleges, it appears to include any sexual interaction if a student reports it to the Title IX office, such as that of a disgruntled partner from a past consensual sexual relationship or someone who regrets the consenting to sex after the fact. Even flirting can be misinterpreted and considered sexual misconduct. Number six, the buddy system. Okay, sorry, I couldn't come up with a better title. Basically what I'm saying is once you've made a few good trustworthy friends, attend parties or social situations with one or more of them so that you have someone who can vouch for your whereabouts at that time and your actions while you're at the event. Last step, number seven, have a plan. It can be devastating, confusing, and traumatic to be falsely accused of sexual misconduct. Many accused individuals have been informed of the accusation just days before their interview, and some without specifics, such as who, what, when, or where. The unexpected accusation and struggle to understand why the accusation was made, or how your behavior might have been misinterpreted, can leave you vulnerable during an interview with a skilled administrator. Keep in mind many Title IX administrators have conflicts of interest, such as maintaining job security, looking forward to job advancement, and securing federal funds by looking sympathetic towards accusers. And they could be trained to believe the accuser's narrative and not follow all the evidence objectively to determine the truth, as I have stated many times before. So, if a member of campus security extracts you from your class, dorm room, or somewhere else on campus and escorts you to a dean's office or the Title IX office, have an action plan that could expose any unethical or legal actions by administrators. You could ask to have someone of your choice, not an employee of the college, with you as an advisor at all meetings or interviews, either virtually, like calling them on your smartphone, or in person. Or you could ask to record the meetings on your smartphone or computer, but be sure to start recording before you ask so you have proof they agreed to be recorded or proof they denied your request to record. Also, you could request to know what evidence has been presented to accuse you, and you could ask the administrator to outline the school's process to determine the truth, how a wrongful responsibility finding will be prevented, and how the process will remain transparent to you. Ideally, these requests will be made in writing, such as in an email, or in the presence of a trusted individual. If they deny your request for basic constitutional due process rights, you might be able to sue them in a court of law, like hundreds have done so far. Which leads me to an important point. Consulting with or hiring a Title IX attorney before you discuss anything with administrators could be the best move you make. These attorneys may detect any unethical, unconstitutional, or inappropriate actions by Title IX administrators. Also check the websites I posted in the beginning of the podcast to, for support and guidance. They were Face, Save Our Sons, and Fire. If you are unable to have an attorney or advisor with you during meetings or interviews, beware of language that attempts to make the accuser's narrative sound true, like referring to the accuser as the victim or survivor. Instead, use the accuser's name or the term accuser or some schools like complainant or reporting party. Also, use the term false whenever referring to the accusations. And lastly, review the Title IX rules so you are aware of what is expected of the administrator and can identify any wrongdoing and what your due process rights are on campus. Please be aware that there are activists on and off campuses, along with some politicians and federal employees who do not want fair, unbiased Title IX rules and procedures. They basically are advocating to strip individuals of their civil liberties, making it almost impossible to defend oneself. You can contact the Office of Civil Rights, your congressperson and senator, to complain about biased Title IX rules and procedures on campuses.
And you can vote for individuals who support our Constitution and due process rights for all Americans on and off college and university campuses. Finally, if you liked or found this podcast helpful, please like, share, or subscribe. Thank you for listening, and stay safe.